Hi friends, how are you all doing? I thought I should complete my part two testimony video. Well, if you want to watch this video, I would recommend that you go back to the first part that, uh, that is titled as Losing Baggage on the Curbside. If you watch that video and come back and watch this video, it would make a lot of sense. Secondly, I want to just ask you an apology because I was not able to make this video for a long time. Of course, I got really busy with a lot of Christmas stuff and I want to wish you all a happy, blessed 2020. So without any further ado, let's get to the point. So on that day, when we reached the Bronx, we realized that the purple bag was missing. It was so devastating because that bag had all my immigration documents, my marks cards, and my credentials. So we had to rush back to JFK. We went back to JFK. There was this lost and found department where they, of course, you all know lost and found. So I went there, they asked me to go back and look for the bag. And when I went and searched, there were all the colors of the bag was there, but not the purple color bag. I was literally there. I was basically shivering, you know, I was shivering. So we went out and we told them that we don't have the bag. They said, okay, they took my phone number and they said they would call me whenever they found the bag. And there was this police lady just opposite to this department standing and I think she was writing something. I just went and asked if she can help me find the bag. And she asked me what was the content of the bag. So I told her I had this immigration documents and marks card. You know what she said? She said that these guys who find this bag, and this, they just open the bag and see if there is anything valuable, if they can sell it or help themselves. But if they find nothing in it, just a bunch of papers, what they do is they just go trash it out. That really shocked, I mean, it, sh it, it shocked me because it's somebody's hard and money, I mean, little courtesy if they can return it back to the airport because if they find the bag in the airport, I would probably go and return it back. I would not trash it out, but that was very devastating. And she also said, since New York is too big, it would be next to impossible to find such a tiny bag in the city. But I was, I was kind of, kind of depressed at that time because you know, if somebody can go into a hopeless situation because some city is bigger than it is bigger than imaginable. You know, that's that's crazy. But of course, I didn't know how big was New York. I would say it would be equal to a four Mumbai's. You know, if you put four Mumbai's, it becomes one New York. I didn't know that, but of course. It made a lot of sense when I realized this fact. So when I came back home in the Bronx, I was not getting sleep at all. Obviously, nobody will get me sleep because basically without those certificates, you're illiterate. You know, you don't have any certificates to prove that you are educated. You have a degree. No, I'm a dentist by my profession, but my degree is lost. Then how do I say, how do I prove myself I'm a dentist? It's highly impossible. So with that thought, I decided to go back to India. Because in that way, I thought it would be worthy enough to work on my marks card again, go apply, reapply the marks card. But mind you, if I have to apply, I'll have to apply from this school, right from the school to my graduate degrees. It was very difficult, but there was no way out for me. 
it would be absolutely inhuman for me to go back to India or go back to these universities and get my certificates back. You know, I will tell you, if you have to make those certificates, you have to you have to start from school. School, then you go to pre-university. It's 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 even beyond imagination to you know to get back those lost certificates. I was completely again and again I say it's completely devastated. So with that plan on my mind, of course I was not able to sleep. You know, you all understand that nobody will get peaceful sleep when you have lost something so valuable. I was physically, mentally shattered and tired. Didn't know what to do. But one fine day, maybe at 4 a.m. in the morning, I was just praying to God and just asking, what should I do? I've come here fresh to this country and I've lost this baggage and completely considered, you know, without this baggage, without these certificates, you're called illiterate. You can't even prove, you know, as I said, you can't even prove that you are educated or you can't even prove your point. So I was just asking God, what would be the solution? The clear voice whispered. God told me that he knows where my bag is and it is intact and he will bring it back to me. I immediately took, I write whenever I hear the, the Lord's voice, I take a paper and write it down. So that day, in the morning 4 a.m., I was not, I was unable to find a paper and pen. I found the pen, but I didn't find the paper. All I had was this Bible. I just jotted down the page, the page of the Bible. That's where I wrote down. I mean, people might laugh at me there. Thousands of people watching, they might laugh at me. But this is what it is. This is my experience I'm sharing with you guys. I will get to this point. I want to talk this in a minute. For the people who laugh at me, or people might ridicule me, I know. So let's keep this aside, the ridiculing part aside. Let's get to the point. So what happened? I told I asked God because it could be my intuitions, it could be my own thought, or it should be it could be my anything lurking on my mind that is giving me false promises. That's what that's what I was thinking. I asked God, Lord, if it is your voice, give me a good sleep. I want to sleep. Give me a good sleep. I've not slept for days. Just give me a good sleep. And I said, that would be a sign of your voice. That would be a sign of your promise. And I just laid my head on the pillow and lo, here I slept so peacefully, so peacefully, I slept. The next day morning, it was confirmed that it is God's voice. I think after two days, I get this phone call from a gentleman named, no, I don't want to mention his name without his permission. There was this gentleman from Pakistan. He called me and said, Hey, Patrick, I got your bag and your box car, and I have it fully intact. This is the word he said. What did God say? God said, I know where's your bag, and it is in debt. So see, see the correlation, see the matching. This is exactly what he said. I was so happy, man. I was so, first of all, when I heard this, I was completely speechless. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. Then, with a lot of joy, I went to his house, and I saw this bag, and I was so happy. I was so happy. Yeah, in fact, he asked me to, Check it out. I mean, I just wanted to check on this certificate. I said, I don't want to check because it's God's promise that said it is intact. I know it is intact. And you said it is intact. So it is intact. I don't have to really dig in and check if all the certificates and baggages are correct. No, I don't have to do it. That's what I said. But I was so curious to know how did he ever get the bag. That was my first point. So he told me, this gentleman is a driver, bus driver. He essentially picks up those tourist guys from the hotels and drops off at the airport. That's his job. So on that day, I think he had a couple of tourists from Europe and he had to drop at the JFK. So while he dropped there, all the tourists got down and picked their bags. But they were wondering whose purpose. So 
they were not sure whether to pick it or they were not sure. So what they did was, the wise thing what they did is, they just left that bag and they took their bag and went into the check in. That's what they did. And this gentleman wanted to hand over the bag, the bag to the last informed department, but he cannot do that because it's, I think it's a three minutes or four minutes parking where he cannot park the vehicle more than four minutes. So he cannot just pick the bag and go drop it off at the last informed. He cannot do that. So what he did, he picked the bag and straight went to his house. The next day, he opened up, found, took all the details of mine and started calling the people. So he found out that I was, I was, a work, I was working at a company in Bangalore. He called the company and, and found out that I left the company and I'm, I'm not with them anymore. He, he did his best to locate me. He went to in, in my LinkedIn profile. He was not able to contact me there. There was this phone in the bag which my aunt had brought me from London and this phone is a locked phone. I mean, you guys all know what is locked phone, right? Unfortunately, when I got this phone as a gift in India, I was not able to unlock it. So I, it was basically of no use. I, no, I took to many people, they were not able to unlock it. They said it's a waste phone, just use it for camera. That was, that's what I was doing. I was just use, using it to click photos, photographs. That's it. The phone book was empty. And of course it had a screen lock. So you have to dial, dial the number to unlock the screen to get into the phone books. So he didn't know that. What he did, it's, he did some kind of per permutation combination stunts. Third, I think the third attempt, it opened. He found this American number there and he called. That's how he contacted me. Now the catch is, I never entered that my brother-in-law's number there. I never entered. Why would I enter it? Because it was a locked phone. It was of no use. I never entered my brother-in-law's number. But how did that number come? Is question. But what I understand is, it could be an angelic help or intervention, an angel intervention. I would say that. People who are watching this video might laugh at me, but that doesn't worry me because maybe one among a thousand may get encouraged with this testimony. That's, that's a testimony. Testimony is basically an antidote for Satan's lies. Somebody will be encouraged. That's why I'm making this testimony. People who are devastated, people are, have lost their hope in their life of losing something. They could have lost their marriage. They could have lost their job. They could have lost money. The finances have been lost. But there is a hope. There is a hope. That is the main reason. That's the main moral of this testimony. I would want to read this scripture to you. Psalms 34, 8 that says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. You know, God's goodness and trusting him matches. You know, our effort is to trust him. And in, by default, God is, God is good. By default, God is good. So all we need to do is trust him. That's exactly what I did that day. I asked God, if it is your voice, give me a good sleep. I slept and next day morning I understood it is God's intervention. It was God's voice. Nobody, I would not want to speak with somebody or pray with to somebody who does not communicate with me. What is the point? I'm not talking to FM radio. No, never. I want somebody responsibly to communicate to me. That's where we make friends. That's why we have relationships. I'm having a relationship with my God. I am not having a religion. I don't hold religion relationship with God. I have a relation. I don't have a religion with my father and mother. I have a relationship with my father and mother. So my God is another father. He's a father. He's a, he's a great God. I have a relationship with him. When I ask of him, ask of something, God will communicate with me. I don't want to hang
hang around with somebody who does not communicate with me. It looks like an arrogance. You know, I keep on communicating and the other person will not answer to me. That shows arrogance. Now, God is not arrogance. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. What is the taste? The sweet taste. Like the taste of the honey that is in the rock is what is my God is. My duty is to trust and God's duty is to finish the promises that he has commenced in our life. Friends, this is the word of encouragement. I lost my back that had a lot of good certificates. A small purple color bag lost in a huge city called New York. Each borough is huge, five boroughs, huge, a tiny bag. If God can look at that bag to me, is there anyone who has lost anything in your life? So I challenge you, friends. I challenge you. Seek the true Lord. I'm not here to convert. I'm not here to, you know, to convince. No. Seek the true God. If you have lost anything in life, it could be finances, it could be marriage, it could be a job, it could be peace, it could be some kind of frustration, you're going through some terrible times, seek the truth. Speak to or pray to somebody who can respond to you, who can talk back to you. God bless you all.